Uh, again, going back to the uh, tying things together and fixing things category, uh, you might want to have a few zip ties, although these are a bit stronger than the uh, Velcro ties, but these are permanent. So once you uh, zip tie something, it, it's, it's gonna stay there until you cut it off. Uh, and then, of course, you might want to have some rope because you never know. You know, maybe you need to hang something off of the ceiling or whatnot. You know, have a little bit of rope. Why not? It's not gonna hurt you. Uh, okay, moving on. Screws. I usually use drywall screws. I find these are super sharp. Uh, they work well with the uh, uh, electric with the electric screwdriver. I uh, have a few lengths. I have one, two, two and a half inch lengths, and this is super easy when it comes to you know uh, assembling, especially wooden parts together. Um, definitely in conjunction with you know metal hardware like this, if you are if you are building something along those lines have a simple generic toolbox you know a couple of screwdrivers a uh, flathead and phillips and if you're into eurorack then definitely most definitely have one of these um, precision screwdrivers because this will make your life a lot easier uh, again having to you know access those tiny little screws this will be necessary uh, a couple of scissors of course and you have seen me use a trust lolo pocket knife you know get something good this is super sharp um, get something that's safe you know you can uh, close it and put it in your pocket so you don't put an open knife in your pocket and you know stab yourself in places you shouldn't stab yourself uh, okay moving on That's what I mean, dog running around, wife playing with dog. <laughs> okay, we're good. Um, okay, you're gonna want to label stuff, especially if you have a lot of equipment. If you're using mixers and patch base on, or anything that eventually might need labeling, because you know, we always think we can remember everything. I know I'm that way, you know, oh, I'm totally gonna remember that this is the kick drum, this is the bass, that's the sub 37, this is the mini Moog, and this is this here. And then when it comes to, you know, actually using the faders, I'll be like, mm, mm, mm. shit, no. So, you know, <laughs> I gave up and I decided to start labeling stuff. And a very good way to label stuff in a non-permanent way is by using masking tape and any sort of uh, pen or Sharpie or whatnot. So, green, white, you choose your favorite color, doesn't matter to me. These come handy because these actually come off easily and they don't leave a, uh, a glue residue on, on equipment, you know, that you paid good money for. So, masking tape and the pen. Um, you are gonna want to have some electrical tape just in case this definitely has come handy uh, again if you're doing something that's beyond your understanding of electricity hire a professional don't use a tape let them use their own what else do we have here okay um flashlights i mean you know can't go wrong with a flashlight uh, there might be a situation where the power goes out and you need to find something quickly so use a flashlight and if you're gonna be building stuff with power drills and screws and cutting wood with um, saws and whatnot, you know, invest into one of these safety goggles. Again, it's not too expensive. Toilet being flushed. Uh, again, it's not super expensive, but there have been a few occasions where I was wearing this, I was slicing a piece of wood and the, something just popped up and it hit it and I went, hmm, how good of me to have these on right now? Because that totally could have taken my eye out. And you know, that's not, that's not, it's you, do, you need your eyes. So safety goggles if you're gonna be uh, engaging in, you know, more elaborate builds and whatnot. And last but not least, it's always good to have a few extension cords, you know, depending on what country you live in, you're gonna have different options for that. Um, here in North America, we have grounded, ungrounded. I keep a few of, of, of all types 
all lengths because <laughs> you know you would think with all these electrical outlets that I installed in the studio I would never need one of these you would be wrong I was wrong I am still running extension cords to many many locations despite the fact that I have 937 electrical outlets in the studio for instance all the speakers do you remember how my speakers are on one switch well the only way to get that done was by running an extension cord to each and every set of speakers because I had to use one central location where the power was coming from which was a switchable location um, and everything was branching out from there and I wasn't able to make that work with the uh, all the wall plugs that I had right so I definitely needed to run all the uh, extension cords last but not least probably the most important things especially in a basement studio you must have and i'm not even gonna give this to you as an option you must have a carbon monoxide detector okay this is this is no fucking joke carbon monoxide which may leak from all the equipment of the house heating especially or hot water heater tank um, it's it's a gas that's odorless it's colorless it's called a silent killer all it does it makes you go asleep and you will never wake up so have a carbon monoxide detector smoke detectors of course carbon dioxide detectors of course I mean have all those but a carbon monoxide detector is an absolute must because it might save your life one day okay and this is probably a bit of an overkill but you know better safe than sorry a uh, fire extinguisher it might become your best friend so invest into one of those again it's not super expensive but again it can save your life you're working with a lot of equipment you have a lot of wires going you never know when something is gonna short circuit or or so you know just have one of these ready know where it is so you can reach it quickly and easily if you ever should need to and uh, that's all there is to it okay so with all these tools with all these um, you know knickknacks laying around you're gonna run into especially you have a more elaborate studio you're a lot of times gonna run into situations where you need something and you don't have it and it's either the middle of the night so you can just go out and get it or it's just not accessible um, but more so just the fact that 90% of these situations usually require something that you can build or MacGyver in some way at least in a temper at least in a temporary fashion and and that saved a lot of money for me okay so you know just by um, just by thinking creatively and and improvising you're gonna be able to save a lot of money and I'm sorry I don't I don't mean to I don't want to sound like a tool or a keener you know don't spend any money and try to save all your money and then this that and the other but yeah do that I mean why would you go and spend hundreds of dollars on something that you can quickly just assemble on your own if you have these tools right uh, and you might be a different person from me you know you might just not be interested in in building these little things you might have a lot of money and just don't give a shit about you know spending you know a few hundred dollars on something that you don't really need to buy because you can build it on your own and and that's totally fine you know whatever floats your boat for me I I have mentioned before and I'll say it again I do like to save money by trying to fix stuff or build it before going out and you know spending money on uh, certain items <laughs> I, yeah, actually, that's a pretty good example. I, and uh, sorry, this this has absolutely nothing to do with music, but I'm gonna show it to you because this is a very good example. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed how I'm crazy about Formula One, and that's pretty much the only um, game that I ever play uh, on Xbox. So I have this very simple racing wheel and pedal setup. This is again nothing expensive, and I'm not too elaborate about it i mean you know i don't spend every day hours and hours racing sims but i did want to build a quick setup that i 
used to see in uh, you know all kinds of advertisements how they have these nice racing seats and it's set up in the perfect way where you're sitting almost in the position as a uh, Formula One driver. And you know, I also checked the price on it. I'm just trying to set this camera here. Aha, <laughs> perfect example, rubber pad, because I need this camera elevated. Awesome. <laughs> see what I mean? There we go, that's better. So I see all these ads about these cool racing chair setups and, and simulator setups and whatnot, and they look amazing, and you almost get to sit in the same position as you know a Formula One driver, and uh, they also cost freaking thousands and thousands of dollars. So I wanted it, but I'm, I wasn't gonna spend the money on it because I'm not that much of a fan. You know, I like to, you know, muck around with it a little bit and have some fun. That's about it, just to shut my brain off. But then I thought, why not utilize what I already have? So I have this couch and it's looking at the big TV and that's where I have the Xbox set up on. You know, why not utilize the couch? Cause you know, if I sit in this couch, then hey, this is almost kind of like how a Formula One driver seats. I mean, yeah, they have their legs up here, but whatnot. Uh, and then I had to put the pedals down there and then I would put the uh, wheel up here uh, on that table where the camera is sitting right now. So this is a pretty good position, but I needed to MacGyver stuff. I needed to build something to hold, especially the pedals, so you know I can step on the brakes properly and not break them and not have them slide away from me all the time. So you know, this is, this is actually pretty cool for a, uh, a Formula One simulator, if you will. And again, I know this doesn't have much to do with music, but it's a good example of you know how you can turn stuff that you already have into usable things. So look, look at the uh, uh, look at these pedals here, and look, look what I built. So this is all wood scraps. These are those you know metal pieces of hardware that I was talking about. So is this? This is the pedal that I purchased. So this is the actual pedal. All this here is something that I just put together, you know, triangulation to make sure that this doesn't slide away. And it was very simple. How much do you think this cost me? Five dollars, if that? Because these are all scraps. Most people would throw these things out, right? But, um, you know, I just used it to create this. And, you know, instead of spending $3,000 on a uh, driving simulator, well, I got something that's pretty close to it for free. <laughs> And I did run into a situation where I actually had to quickly fix something which broke in my studio during the course of the studio build and I just happened to have the camera on so I recorded the whole thing and I'm going to show that to you in the next video. Alright, I'll see you there.